Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Yet he can do nothing to save himself from bronchitis. That's right. He's sick tonight. And as I say, always funny. Always funny when it dies. It's funny. I had a guy come up to me at the hospital and was like, oh, my God, you're sick. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny, though. Well, you know, it's the fire, ch- fire chief's house burning I down. Know. That's what I said. Once in a while when, uh, when the chief of police has to go do time, gets bust for something, gets thrown in the joint. That's yeah. what it is. AFI is our uh, guest tonight. Jade, is it Puget? That's correct. Good job. Oh, my God. You're the first person to ever pronounce that right. Yeah. They put, put some, like, French flavor. Puget. 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 Like, and uh, Adam Car- <laughs> Sa- Sa- Carson is uh, in here tonight. And then we're going to uh, rotate the band, you uh, got the other, co- other band members. You got what? the good guys, the cool guys here. Right? That's the cool section. <laughs> These guys. Are here. Yeah. Don't worry about them. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's the AAA yeah, that's team okay. in there. We got the pros already. You know. Yeah. Well, you guys made the show. Those guys are just <laughs> your bad boys. Uh, big uh, buzz around the band. Got all yeah. the uh, all the people from the station in here. Had uh, the folks out uh, front uh, wanting them to sign stuff. Got uh, got the uh, new CD. You're doing a signing tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At, at midnight. So, so look it, at the goddamn peanut gallery. <laughs> I know we Filled never we never have uh, more than uh, six people. Hey, peanut gallery. No, more than three people really. Yeah. in there, and I, two of those are usually not breathing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's funny they don't breathe in there, but once in a while I see them laughing, and I think, oh, they're finally finally growing on to the Ace Man. Then I know sure they're, they're watching uh, Faulty Towers on uh, PBS oh, up on the John TV Cleese. or something. Yeah, they're, they're not big fans of mine over there, but they, they enjoy uh, TV. This is like being on like the set of Cheers or Seinfeld all of a sudden after listening for so long and all of a sudden being in this room. It's got to be weird. Yeah, it's a, well, scary. It's a letdown, though. I'm sorry. Is, is this, yeah, is this yeah. surreal at all? Yeah, because I've been watching for so long. It's like watching a show like Cheers, and all of a sudden you're like sitting in the bar, and there's like an arm, and you're like, oh, okay. Now is it now, now, I mean, I, I guess you knew what we looked like yeah. because I've seen us in other, other places. But the, the studio, disappointing, right? I expected like these this uh, wood paneling and this like plush carpets, but yeah. I'm not disappointed. But you really must not be a regular listener as you, if you've not heard him complaining about this. <laughs> oh, I'm not, sure. no, I never heard that. This oh. is kind of like a dank little cave cavern. Yeah, clay yeah. don't get him small. going. Oh my god, <laughs> I feel you. Dude. I totally feel you. Uh-huh. All right. Well, uh, I want to give uh, I want to give a plug out to the band Thanks. for tonight. But uh, where are you guys going to be at midnight? We uh, the uh, the Tower Records on uh, Sunset in Hollywood. Oh, that is. Uh, Right, right on. Is that on? Oh, yeah, right in the middle of uh, Sunset Strip, pretty much. Yep, pretty much. And uh, so the the, se- the uh, record goes or the CD goes on sale on uh, Tuesday, but technically it'll be tonight. Tuesday <laughs> at twelve oh one tonight. And the band will be there, so they're just going to hang out for the first hour, right? Uh, yeah. Or as long as it takes you to get there. Good. Yeah. So Has it already gone platinum? Isn't that uh, how they do this in record business? It's not gone, us. It's it hasn't gone on sale yet. Already. It hasn't gone on sale yet, but it's already it's, gold. It's, yeah. it's, it's a double gold. They've shipped platinum yeah, right. already. We ship pewter, so, you know. I would just tell my record company, just go ahead and ship it. I don't yeah. care if they want it or not. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you get the little plaque, and then you're yeah, well, ship it, put ship it up it on my, the wall. Sh- ship it to my garage. doesn't matter. Let's just <laughs> ship platinum. they got to get the distributors to buy it, though. Yeah, but I'm saying, take just we'll ship them, get and em. you just keep them. And if you can sell them, great. If not, you ship them back. But we shipped platinum, and think, that's that you went on a technicality. They buy records and, and destroy them. Oh, really? I heard like these stories, like which I think some of them are true. They buy you know tens of thousands of records and just throw them away. And so they get the sound scan. The Nazis did this with books, Drew. But <laughs> to get the thing. book sales up, it was up, different. Yeah. It didn't have to do with their publicist. It was. A, oh, I'll explain it to you <laughs> one day. All right, let's uh, take some calls and uh, we'll hear something from AFI and all that stuff. And we have to switch the it at the half time. because they guys are going out to the signing. Right, Melissa. Yes. You're 21. Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been with my boyfriend for about six and a half years now, mm-hmm. and normally we have regular sex two, three times a week. Mm-hmm. And about a year ago, he was involved in a, a wreck for work, and he injured his lower back. Mm-hmm. And about three weeks ago, he had lower back surgery, and they removed the disc, and they corrected the problem. How many discs? Um, I believe they removed half the discs and bone fragments half, that were embedded. 
half a disc. Disc. Yeah, and they replaced it yeah. with. Um, don't don't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And um, for the whole year, we've been having problems because it hurt his back to have right. sex. All right. He couldn't get well, his. Oh, hurt his back. Yeah. But um, just, that, should be, that should be a question we ask when we're trying to determine whether somebody's just malingering or opiate addicted or really have legitimate back injury. But did he did he have did he have a trouble with his penises? Um, no, not that. It was just the um, the movement, the jarring. Um, it was just painful to the back. Backs, okay. And um, now that the surgery's been is done and he's recuperated, mm -hmm. whenever he can't have sex now because he says that whenever it's time to orgasm. His whole lower part, it hurts. Um, excruciating pain. Has hmm. he told his uh, surgeon about this? Um, he's kind of mentioned it, but he doesn't want to say anything. Um, Why? He's very embarrassed. Look, well, then you got to go in there with him and talk about this, because he need, the surgeon needs to know about this. Does he have any trouble holding his urine or his stool or anything like that? No, not at all. all right. That's and why I'm a little suspicious, because I'm trying to wonder if maybe... All right. What uh, medications is he on? <laughs> um, well, why, well, why would he be lying? Well, I do um, it. Well, you know what? Really? Uh, but if, I but, but back, then, you then you make <laughs> that. You say that excuse for oral sex. Yeah, but you know, I got banged the bejesus out of you all night in the you know wheelbarrow. But I can't do the oral. That hurts my back. She, <laughs> <laughs> she, I think she's getting this feeling that he's sort of avoidant because he's probably more focused on his opiates than on the sex. That's what true. Okay, but can, can anybody have a back surgery not that, that you call, trust? Not that calls this show. Okay. Is he is he doing the opiates, Melissa? Uh, very, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, there uh, you go. He, he dabbles in everything. All right, magically I knew that. Well, of course, I got back surgery, so your genius saying he's on painkillers? Of course he's on painkillers. But the, the avoidant quality and the preoccupation, he, his, his love now is his drugs. All right. That's, well, that's what he's into. My mistress is the sea. What's the big deal? I mean, we all have our passions, Drew. He was into it heavily before. Yeah. And it was never an issue because that's not my thing. I, I don't like that. Yeah, but, but Melissa, you, you got it. He needs to be looked at by somebody who understands addictions. Well, he's kind of, um, now he's into absence. And abstinence? Absence? No, the, the drug. Absence. Yeah. Absence? Oh, so he's doing all kinds of stuff. True. You didn't pay, I got to tell you, absence? All right. Absinthe is what she said. So. I understood yeah. it. All right. So be that as it may. Look, Absolutely. Melissa, you've got a real problem on your hands here, and you've got to have to tell, alert the doctors that you think there's a real serious addiction problem. And the fact that he, he's not available to you is merely because he's away into his disease. And until he comes back from that, he's not going to be available. You might want to look into some Narconon in the meantime. All right. That's uh, but narcotics. Anonymous. Anonymous. People involved with those people. All right. Well, good times. <laughs> yeah, I've I've learned from this show that anyone under fifty who gets a back surgery is just an opiate addict. That calls this show. That calls this show. Yeah. Actually, everyone is suspect. <laughs> even I hate to say it. Even people that come on this show are are suspect. And this guy right here was complaining about his back earlier. Yeah, actually, my back's been hurting all day long. Something else. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a hop head. You stopped having sex. Um, no. All right. No problem. <laughs> my, my mom's listening. Man. <laughs> Silk. Yeah. Hey, Adam. How you doing? Hey. Hey. You're on with the Adam and Jade of AFI. You got Silk and Jade. But, yeah, uh, all right. Well, wow. there's some uh, PIs from the 70s or something. <laughs> um, well, I, have, I have two questions for AFI. And, uh, well, first of all, you guys are great. And, uh, Thank you. I look up to you when I want to write songs for my band. And, cool. Yeah, anyways, uh, my questions are if, you ever, if you're ever motivated by any other rock bands to help you <laughs> write your great song lyrics and ideas or whatever. Um, it's not necessarily bands so much just really everything you know yeah you know the books you read and poetry and new music but bands you know like the cure and you know guns and roses and uh old punk bands you know everything we listen to everything a lot of electronic stuff that's cool all right and uh my second question is uh what you guys feel about people downloading your songs uh off the internet because you know i don't want to take your hard work you guys have done for free and well you know it's like People can't can't wait, you know. I don't really blame them, but uh, you know, as long as they go by the record and they don't just be like, "Oh, I already got it," so I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna spend my money on it. But right. you know, it's understandable. That's that's here to stay, and to try to fight against it, it's just, you know, it's pointless. So. Well, is uh, Silk? Yeah, I'm putting you on hold. All right, brother. All right. All right. Yeah, this is something that was going on. I mean, it was big in the news 
five years ago. Like, this is going to destroy the record industry. Everyone's mm. just going to get their hands on everything. No one's going to buy anything anymore. But people seem to make money. Bands tour. People get paid. I mean, maybe they're not getting paid what they should get paid. I don't, I don't know if they can definitively figure out what it is, you well, know, like if someone's not buying a record. But it is destroying the music industry. Like It is. Yeah. Record sales are down, I think, 33%. You know, that's a third from f- over the last, I think, five years. These numbers probably could be a little off. But, yeah, this is a crazy crisis in the music industry right now over downloading. It's like destroying. What about, uh, but what about like concert tours and things like that? Because yeah. it seem, seems to me like, okay, on one hand, they're ripping off your stuff. They're not paying you. They're taking it. On the other hand, word is spreading about your music is getting out in places that maybe yeah, it wouldn't get to. There's there's two sides to it. I mean, you know, people are downloading the record for free, but um, you know they have the opportunity to hear it and uh, you know pass along their friends. So the I band's would, being promoted. I would imagine it would. I would man. I'd like to see where uh, concert sales were as opposed to where record sales were. You know, from the last five years. I just years. read an article actually about you know Clear Channel, which is the huge, you know, the concert promoter and everything else media wise, but. All, a lot of their big concerts, the the ticket sales have really fallen off. Really? A lot of the big name concerts, which is, you know, that's odd too. I guess, I don't know, it might be just the economy, the way the economy's going. You know, people don't want to go out and spend 50 bucks to go see a concert. Or, or maybe they don't want to be in big rooms with lots of people. That's true too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting too that another thing that's, you know, happening as a result of this is, is labels are, are forced to sell the, the records a lot cheaper. Like a record that comes out. Um, nowadays, if they're a new artist, they can get it for six ninety nine or something. Oh, really? <laughs> Whereas, like two or three years ago, the nice price is what they call it was nine ninety nine. Well, I remember when uh, they came out, um, you know, in the eighties, and it was like, well, CDs are they're sixteen bucks now, but they're gonna they're gonna be like four bucks in ten years, <laughs> and they just never seemed to really uh, they never they didn't even really creep down too much. They pretty a, much yeah. pretty much flatlined. Bring back cassettes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Adam wants eight tracks back. I like eight tracks. Well, I actually, I'd like to bring back a uh, uh, six track, a little known, even worse technology. There Five and a half track. There was a six track. No, I just made that up. <laughs> but you're sick, Drew. So you're vulnerable. Yeah, I am. All right, should we hear something from AFI? Do you want to uh, one take more call one more first. call? One more call. Then we're here. Okay. All right, Ksenia. Yeah. Hi. You're 14. Mm-hmm, yeah. What's um, up? Uh, my boyfriend is. Uh, he apparently has a multiple personality disorder, mm-hmm. and uh, he cheated on me. But he says that he like blacks out, and he was in um, another one of his personalities. Adam, is this not the perfect alibi? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's convenient. A, that's that's a, convenient. Take notes, gentlemen. This is it. We've discovered it. Yeah, that was yeah. Rick Moranis. And I, was if, I mean, like, if he really wouldn't remember. If he really, uh, you know, people debate what the diagnosis of multiple personality disorder really is. But one thing I think that's pretty universally agreed upon is that there's a dissociative component to it. The people sort of fade out. They go away in some fashion, and they sort of, theoretically, another personality emerges. So, yeah, the person that you're relating to may, in fact, sort of dissociate and something else emerge. I think, uh, if not to develop, I mean, my plan is, because, you know, I plan on cheating soon myself. Yeah. My yeah. plan is, A, not to announce it on the radio. B. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. Okay, okay. But here's my plan. My see, you know how the black athletes speak about themselves in the third person all the times? Like Roy Jones Jr. does not take any man lightly and he respects every man. But Roy George I, Foreman. Yeah. Okay, here's why I believe they do this. Because ultimately mm-hmm. down the road when they cheat and their wife approaches them, they're like, You cheated. <laughs> Roy Foreman. Jones Jr. doesn't cheat. <laughs> yes, you did. Well, all right. It doesn't sound like the kind of thing he'd do. But I will talk to him <laughs> when he comes back. And then they just come back. It's like, Roy said he didn't do it, and I have to believe him. And it'd be great. Then she'll divorce Roy, but it's never him. This is a good plan. This and the, But I think the that's not going to work on a white guy. I, even though, as big a celebrity as I could be, I still can say Adam Carolla. But I could start developing... I think the multi-personality is the white man's version I of see. the third person. I got it. I think. Well, you, you got your, what's your radio alternate personality? Oh. Virgin? No, no, no. The no. other guy, the fast-talking guy. Yeah, Ace Rockola. Ace Rockola. <laughs> He's blaming on Ace Rockola. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that would go Because that's kind of his well. lifestyle, you know, like the He's swinging swinger. guy. Yeah. You can't stop Ace. He's out there on the town, it's you know? the, His public demands it. I saw yeah. a court TV thing when we were in North Carolina. It was about a guy who used this as a defense against murder. 
<laughs> his multiple personality. Yeah. 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 I, well, I when hurt. I was in college, they taught me that uh, that was just a kind of a construct of the uh, of the the medical kind of community, like the multiple personality thing, and that had been debunked, kind of. No. You don't I, see it on I, guys too much. It's more in women. I I have witnessed it, and it is. Unbelievable when you see people shift one personality. It, it is wild. Stop I mean, about his wife. No, well, no, no. Would I have noticed it? Because he like told me, but I never really noticed. Well, listen. Here's the thing. Was, did he ever have any serious trauma growing up? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, no. I'm assuming maybe he was lying. Okay. You know? well, what, was, it, what was his trauma? Uh, he had like uh, his parents were like screwed up. His dad's an alcoholic, and his parents were divorced. But his dad like lives on their couch or something. But to get M- yeah. MPD, it's usually ritualistic, you know, severe trauma. Like I, I'm. I don't want to divulge any confidences, but people being, you know, urinated on, defecated on, beaten, and strapped in the basement, and it comes to me in high school. That was you to your buddies. <laughs> yeah, well, they had it coming. Yeah. Tee on me, but, I'm going to pee back. I mean, really, and sexual abuse, and, and usually at the you hands... You guys should know this, too. Usually at the hands of caretakers. Are you going to pee on us? You pee on me. I'm coming back at you with urine. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Usually at the hands of caretakers. And what is in question is exactly what this thing is. People really don't have not figured out what, what this thing is we're observing, but this clearly is a syndrome. All right, so... Can I, can I ask yeah. a little favor of Adam and Jade, please? Sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. My birthday's on a Wednesday, and I was... Could you, like... Wish me a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. I hope that uh, your boyfriend's personality on your birthday is the nice one. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, look. 14. How old is he? 17. All right. Forget it. Come on, baby. Really? You need this at 14? You need this kind of a service in your life? I'm 15 on Wednesday. Oh, all right. We used to marry him then. Please. Let's be 15. Huh. Okay, look. Can you imagine trying to deal with this guy? At 15. 15 years old. I mean, come on. Multi-personality screwing around on you. He's 17. And as a guy, if he grew up with the alcoholic dad and he grew up in some chaos, this guy's probably out of control. Yeah. All right. It just, everybody, don't be scared to cut your losses. I mean, I, I think we do it a little too fast when it comes to therapy and education and jobs, but we don't do it fast enough when it comes to relationships. Mm-hmm. You know that part where you're ready just to walk out of your job because uh, your manager gave you the stink eye or after two rounds of therapy you decided the guy's a quack and you don't need this anymore? Careful, though. The, our, our callers, the relationships that they'll walk out on will be the ones they should stick with. Okay. You know what True. I'm saying? Why do you have to undermine my brilliant point? I just, 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 just want to... He was building that's, something that's there. The, that's the NyQuil talking. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Building something beautiful. I know. I'm sure I was going somewhere <laughs> yeah. and then you just pulled the I carpet know, but out. But I needed to say that. <laughs> right. Okay. Good times there, Drew. What did I say? Okay. All right. <laughs> Drew's sick. AFI is uh, in studio tonight. We will. Uh, we got Adam and Jade in here, and then we'll rotate the other guys in. They got to go do their uh, opening or their release party out at uh, Tower Records on Sunset real soon. So they're just going to stay for the first hour. But we'll uh, hear something off the uh, new CD. You queued up there, Anderson? Yep. This one's called "Girls Not Gray." Cool. Yeah. Wow, that's another applause. For me. AFI is uh, in studio tonight. Adam and Jade are both here. Hello. Davey and uh, Hunter are going to come in. In uh, well, I guess they got to leave at eleven. Oh, we'll do the swap midstream. Let that yeah, out. do it exactly at ten thirty. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's be fair. Also, uh, I wanted to uh, give everyone a heads up that the uh, new Crank Yankers oh, are uh, nice. going uh, Tuesday nights on uh, Comedy Central. Or, and when uh, do I get to do mine? Crank Yanker. Yeah, that's the uh, puppet crank call show that uh, all the world is buzzing about. Mm-hmm. So I want to give, uh, it's a new season, so I want to give the props out. That's uh, Tuesday night, but a lot of the country is going to hear this show. You're going to do one, Drew? We did one. Drew did one. Yeah, me and Drew did one. We did a couple of them. Yeah. You, you were freestyling? <laughs> Yeah. When's it going to air? Drew is freestyling. <laughs> wow, Drew, you asked, you asked me that three days ago. I can't remember what you said. <laughs> I told you at the end at the end of the season because we did it fairly late in the run. So, like, in, what's the end of the season mean? Like, May? Uh, that, that bronchitis will have killed you long before it hits yeah, the air. Right, It'll be okay. a fitting memorial. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> All right. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. AFI is in the studio tonight. Adam and Jade are both here. And we'll bring in uh, Davey and Hunter in about... Uh, Three minutes. Yeah. Now, does that work out? What do you mean? I mean, they're both in for 30 minutes. Yeah. But does one of them get an extra break? 
no. top of the hour thing. That's fair, no, it's right? All good, yeah, it's all good. All right, so we'll bring uh, the other guys in in uh, 30 minutes. Uh, Sing the Sorrows, the name of the CD. It is coming out on Tuesday, but they're doing a big uh, signing party tonight, midnight at the Tower Records on Sunset. So if you want to get down there, you're in the L.A. area, and you want to get that CD, head on down. All right, so why don't we, uh, you can also uh, go to uh, www. Uh oh, let's see. Oh, a fire inside. There you go. There you go. Uh, dot net, and uh, you can uh, get hold of the band that way and find out the schedule and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's uh, take One a call. call. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leslie? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Um, I wanted to ask if I, you know, the first week that they played your um, sing, um, Girls Not Gray song on K Rock, mm -hmm. um, people were getting pissed off because they thought. You were getting too much exposure, and they didn't want to hear you with other... They didn't want kids listening to you because they listen to pop music, punk, whatever. What did you guys think about that? Well, it's always been the goal of the band to uh, allow as many people as possible to, to hear our music. So, I mean, we're really comfortable with being on the radio, and we're comfortable with the record we've made. So, um, you know, we just want people to hear it. It's understandable. I mean, I know bands that... I'm the only one that knows about them, of the people that I know. You know, you're kind of jealous, and you want your band to be just yours. You don't want other people knowing about yeah. them. And it's understandable, but at yeah. the same time, if you play decent music, more and more people are going to find out, and it's just the natural progression of things yeah. for a band to get bigger. Well, and also, you, you get your one band, but you spend the whole time, you like your one band, t trying to talk your friends into listening exactly. to your one band, <laughs> yeah. so it's ironic. And then as soon as they do. Then as soon as, so, well, as soon as it they gets picked up, essentially a bunch of friends listen to it. Now it's all of a sudden they've sold out. Exactly. People yeah. have been telling us that we've sold out for, for years and years. We had a, a song off our first record played on the radio like once or twice mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and suddenly we were a big sellout, so mm -hmm. yeah. you get but, used to it. <laughs> I know. Well, that's the, it's the trappings of getting anywhere near the punk title. It's like uh, if anything happens, if uh, you uh, have a kid, get married, yeah. make some money, or sell a record, it's like, well, he's yeah. sold out. Yeah, No longer yeah. punk. Yeah. 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 Luckily, we haven't been too worried about that for a long time. All right. So, are we ready to do the uh, transfer? Because uh, we have uh, Davey and Hunter coming in here and uh, swapping out for Adam and Jade. Guys, a delight meeting you. <laughs> it, was, it was much thank you. <laughs> much, yes. much too short. Much yeah. too short. But uh, thank you. Well, us. we'll see. We can still talk in the halls. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Uh, but don't banger. Adam pays no attention to you. He forgets your name. Oh, come on, buddy. No, but I'm just saying, but... By the time somebody walks out in the hall, we're like, oh, what's the name again? Was it? Oh, it's Drew, I, I know that's a cold medicine talking because that's not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know oh, you God. know who I am. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, guys. So uh, now Davey and uh, Hunter are uh, here representing the band. Hello. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming in and visiting our show. I was and, talking to Drew earlier. I was hoping to sit on your lap tonight, Adam. Oh, see, there was confusion. We thought that it was the other Adam. We thought it was the band Adam that you were speaking of. Oh, no, Adam, okay. Adam was just here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You. Well, if it was closer to Christmas, I think we could do it. Because <laughs> then we, you have that sort of theme, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I'll give you a little ride during the commercial. Thank though. you. All right. Because that's that seems fair, right? right? We'll keep it. We'll keep it between us. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Mazel Tov to the band's success. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, it's quite a quite an outpouring of uh, enthusiasm around here. We yeah. really, it's really usually uh, just a just a morgue around here at <laughs> night. Uh, there's nobody around. The people that are here are angry and sleepy, <laughs> and uh, you have people waiting outside. Everyone's uh, the, the uh, studio's a buzz there. So nice again, that, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks. And uh, again, they're going to be down at the uh, Tower Records at uh, midnight doing their signing on Sunset. So you guys just jump in. You know how it goes, Lindsay. Yes. You're 20? Yes. What's up? I think I'm falling for a gay guy. Yeah. Mm. That's not good. You don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that won't work. Not is much he, future in that. Is he your friend? Yes, I've known him for about seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. And it, and if you, how long have you had a crush on him? For the last year. At first I thought it was just, I don't know, a phase, because I'd be like, get the tingly feeling inside, and then it'd go away. It's just just a friend and then come back it was just all weird and now it's like she's stuck forever yeah but it, to me this means nothing else is going on for you you know what i mean there's not other guys around 
Well, actually, I do have a boyfriend right now, which is oh. really don't happen. Yeah. Really? Not really helping. And you, so you're not into this guy that you're with now? You're 20. Not really. This is sort of 14-year-old behavior, isn't it? Lindsay? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> well, obviously, she's going <laughs> to argue with her, Drew. She's 20. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if she argues with this. This is the work of a uh, a, uh, a genius, a gifted genius. <laughs> right, Lindsay? <laughs> right. See that? See how easy go. it is? All right, so, uh, Lindsay, yes. why don't you break up with your boyfriend? Because clearly you're not into him. Right. I I don't know. It's just... Are you, Adam is right. That's first order. Are you not into him? Not really. All right, they just end that. that. That's one sort of clear issue here. Right. The, you know, being into the gay guy, I, you know, what's your goal there? It's, does, it's does, never going to happen. Does he claim right. to be bi? Is he ever bi? No, not even close. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it, why. I don't even know why. So he's not even close. Is that intriguing to you that he's unavailable? No, I don't. I don't know. Okay, so you don't. You, don't, you sound just confused. No much, you know. <laughs> All right. What's that? Okay. <laughs> Obviously, she drifted okay. off after, Whatever. after Drew called her fourteen. <laughs> hey, Lindsay. Yes. Just uh, just go ahead. Don't have any kids, all right? Oh, never planned on it. <laughs> you never planning on it? No. What happened people. to you? What happened? What happened? Where, who's that? Your mom? No, that's my cousin. Oh. What'd your dad do to you? Still a virgin. Shut up. Still a virgin? Yeah, I'm still a virgin. Mm -hmm. Not what, ha what happened? I have no idea. Well, uh, where's your dad? Actually, True, I think please. I hate guys. I yeah. Hate all right. Now we go. I've... Now. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. Because my... It's my mom and my dad right. have always fought. Only when I was around, it was always because of me. I was never good enough. Oh boy. And I think, and my dad just like totally traumatized me. Why? What did he do? I was always the bad person. Me and my sister getting fight. It was always me. I was the one always getting yelled at. What did he do? Did he just, emotional abuse, or did he hit he you? Very, very badly. Physical abuse. No, no. Emotional abuse. Very, right. very badly. All right, well, that's enough. That's well, enough. good times. Yeah. The thing about outcome with emotional abuse is that has one of the most profound impacts on self-esteem. So kids that have gone through that end up with really low self-esteem. Now, interestingly, most of the girls that get that go out and have a lot of sex with guys. I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe she's lesbian. Yeah. No, I think she just got soured on the the whole sort of male female yeah, experience. Yeah. yeah. And she freaked her out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she's looking for a guy. She doesn't like anybody. So she wants a guy that's unavailable. Yeah, she can have no realistic uh, chance of mm -hmm. having a relationship with. But listen, I don't blame her because I was looking at a gay couple. I was out, uh, where the hell was I? I was out to dinner or something the other night. And I was looking at this gay guy and he was glowing. And he must have been in his 40s, but it didn't look like he had pores, you know? The gay men look like they're Waxing. illuminated Great. because yeah. they're, they're buffed. <laughs> You know, it's like they're they're uh, the they do they use the uh, exfoliating cream on there, and then they just hit them themselves with a loofah, and they just look like the hood of a car that's been polished with carnauba wax. You know, and he's wearing a he's wearing a tank top, and he's all tan, and there's not a hair on him. He's all buff, and he he's he, you know you could tell the guy was in his forties, but he looked brand new, and it was like I was like. It's a nice piece of ass over there. I mean, right. I, 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 You're I, in. I kind of see what's going on. And then, then we got the twin, you know, we got the dual income thing. Oh, the, the lifestyle, forget it. You know, the guy's probably a, a master chef, He's a world traveler. <laughs> think, think coming of, up with all these elaborate <laughs> fantasies. <laughs> Between so, your we're on a cruise. <laughs> He's exfoliating in the bathroom for 22 hours. I'm on the deck sunning. How about the design projects in your new house? Oh, he's Adam. Got, he's got some new stuff that's made out of apricot shells that he uses as a scrub. Eventually just scrubs his face off. There's just nothing but shiny bone. He could probably fix you up pretty good. Yeah. Like fix you up? Like oh, my, up my, a little bit? my eyebrows yeah. are mad. Oh, that's gone. Yeah. I, look, I, like I was going to say something. like Eartha Kitt when he yeah. was done with my like, eyebrows. Yeah, you're so <laughs> goddamn in at oral sex that what the hell? You won't even, what difference does it make to you? The guy's prettier than any woman I've been with. has nicer pores. I just close my eyes. I lean back. Oh, that that famous <laughs> position, the famous. I would get. I, yes, I, w I would recline. I would receive oral. Receive. That's what I would. Let expert him, receiving. I would let him wax and buff my face. Mm, good time. Uh, I would let him style my hair. I'd have him in the kitchen. Do you want to rethink me sitting garage. on your lap right now? Adam? Yeah, this. <laughs> there might be the time this could right be now. A line. <laughs> and as far as the the chick thing went. I think with time I could get you'd, past you'd, you'd that. You'd miss the boobs, but you could probably sort of find a way around that. I think I could. Because you'd, you'd 
Here's I mean, what I'd do. Where are the boobs when you're getting oral sex anyway? I would put a flat screen on the TV, on the ceiling. Yeah. On the ceiling, and it run like a big boob video. <laughs> he, he'd give me oral, and we'd there be you done. Go. That's it? It'd be oh great. My God. I'm, and scared, like, I'm scared what you just invented. No jewelry would ever be exchanged. You know what I mean? There'd be none of those crazy conversations. I had a huge argument with my wife tonight because she wouldn't go along with me on something that I... I, I got to go to the dentist tomorrow and get a tooth pulled. And I was like... Uh, I always go nuts because they make everything out of metal and they clank it in my mouth. And I, and I said, there's nothing more annoying than, than metal, than a hollow metal tube, the one they're sucking my uh, life out, you know, all the blood out and everything. It's whacking it against my teeth for an hour. And she goes, wouldn't bother me. I knew she was mad about something, but this was it. You know, and I said, what do you mean? Of course, of course metal bothers you when you get hit in the teeth. She's like, no, not me. Yeah, I don't get that either. I don't. I, don't, I, know, <laughs> okay, I know what you're you talking too. about. There you go. I know what okay. you're talking about, but I don't get that when they're mad. All right, but here's what the conver- here's where the conversation went. So I said, "Listen, are you telling me that if someone took something metal and just was banging it on your teeth for an hour, it wouldn't bother?" Nope. Oof. Nope. Not at all. I said, "Are you nuts?" And she said, "No." And so she went to the kitchen. She got a she got a uh, oh. fork. <laughs> she got, oh, she no, said, <laughs> but this is a great argument. Oh, man. She comes to the kitchen. She goes. She, I go. Oh, go get a spoon. Get a spoon and bang it against your teeth, and you see how you feel. So she comes back. She comes back with a butter knife, and uh-huh. she starts banging the butter knife against me. But it's flat, you know. It's kind of just doing a flat thing. I said, "Oh no." No, no. You go back and get a spoon. Go back and get a spoon and go bang that against your teeth. So she goes back. She gets a spoon. Now she's standing in front of me with a spoon, and she's going, gang, 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 gang. Oh and then she's giving me the, like, see, not doing anything. I said, give me that spoon. So I take the spoon, and I said, see, it, it's not bothering you because you can control it. You give me the spoon. You let me do it. So she's standing there. That's 9.15. I'm in a towel. And I'm going, I'm taking a spoon. It's my wife's mouth, and I'm banging it around. Ha-ha. Not so pleasant, is it anymore? She goes, hey, not bother me. Not, and then so I'm hitting it a little harder on her team. Oh She's like, God. doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. And I realized, uh, this is it. I got to go gay. But this would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> we would have separate rooms. We wouldn't even be talking. <laughs> oh, you, you know what I'm saying? Just wait till they're kids. There's no way I'd be taking a spoon and banging inside my gay lover's mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll just be your penis. That's right. All right. I'm getting all heated up now. I'm getting excited. <laughs> AFI's in the uh, studio. We'll uh, take a little break. Davey and uh, Hunter are both here. We've done a little member exchange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. AFI's in the studio tonight. Davey and Hunter are both uh, here from the band because we did a little uh, band switch out. Now, the band is only going to be here until uh, the 11 o'clock hour because they have to go over to the tower on Sunset and uh, sign the new CD. Yes. So, but we do appreciate you coming in here for the first That's hour. Thank you for having us. going to be a scene, I bet. I think it'll be fun. We just we just did one earlier. I'd like to in say Brea. hello to all the kids who were there in Brea. Yeah, there were Thank some you very 700, much for coming. 700 kids? Mm-hmm. Like seven, eight, something like that. They do come out to those things. They do. And they bring <laughs> presents, very nice presents. Thank you for all the gifts and kind words. We have yeah. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fans, by the way. We too. saw them. Drew, yeah, do amazing. you, uh, like, when you were coming up, did, did Count Basie ever do a <laughs> signing, like, when you were in high school or Les Brown or any of those... Uh, I mean, I guess, uh, well, what's his name's plane went down in the war? What's that? Uh, Glenn, Glenn, Miller. Glenn, Glenn Miller. Miller. So you probably would have caught just, him. Yeah. When you were probably a little older when Glenn no, he's was. He playing at the uh, at ballroom in Boston. I caught him. You're there. already in your 20s, so when Glenn was, was in, in college, his heyday. Going to college. Oh, college. Yeah. Okay. But do you remember this kind of stuff going down? No, seriously, though. No, like, like, like Led, the, 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 did, Yeah, no, Led Zeppelin did not didn't show this. up. No, didn't do this. No. And what about, like, Speedwin or something like that? No. Don't remember any of that? Do you? How about uh, who played your prom? Scotty, Snotty Scotty and the Hankies? Or I was at, I told you, I was at a prom with uh, Van Halen. Van Halen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. David Lee Roth. Yeah, I was, I was giving blood in a, at a, my kid's football team, blood drive, and I was lying in this room. I thought, I have been in this room. Oh my God! That's it was a room amazing. I was in 1973, 74. Wow! <laughs> Van Halen was playing on this little crazy platform. Wow! Wow! wow. Yeah. That's really cool. And Drew, re- you you knew at that time they were going to be big stars. No, they sucked actually. Uh, All right. right. <laughs> Did they have the flash pots? I read uh, no, his no. autobiography and said they used to make their own pyrotechnics. Not no pyrotechnics. Even, even before they had that, an organ player. I remember that. There was an organist. Organ? Wow. Like a Hammond or something? Yeah, it was strange. And yeah. Van Halen? You sure? You sure you're watching Van Halen? Early, maybe, early but maybe, Van that, Halen? maybe. <laughs> 
there was somebody else playing that night. I'm going to get confused or something. Uh, but there's definitely Van Halen there. I don't know. No, they, they were there. Oh, you don't know if they had a keyboard. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's talk to Christy, who's 18. Christy? Hi. What's up? How are you guys doing? Good. Okay. Um, I'm not sexually, like, I don't have, I'm still a virgin, but, like, I still, like, you know, have foreplay and stuff with um, guys and stuff, like, and I'm 18, and, like, I've been eaten out three times, mm-hmm. and they're all by different guys. I see. And they just sort of tagged out, and the next guy came in there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, this is over the course of a couple of evenings. No, a couple of weeks, Mike. Oh, I'm a couple good... weeks? Okay. Yeah. It's a I'm, long time. I'm, I really want to save myself till marriage. So, like, I'm trying to be good, but, like, I can't help it because, you know, I'm human. I have emotions and feelings and urges and whatnot, sure, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, so, um... Three different guys. <laughs> And then, um, what happened? Okay, so today it happened, and like, past times, like, once, first time I read. I Third, was, what? Today was number three, or was yeah, there a fourth was number guy? Three. Number three came in, all right. Yeah, and the first time I, that happened, like, I totally read, like, went to my orgasm, like, totally had a good time. I was like, woo, right? That was good stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And then the second time, like, um, I was sort of confused, like, he was, it, it, he told me it was his first time, but he went at it so quickly, I don't think he, it really was, but anyways, he did it, and like, it was sort of weird, like, he didn't had no work. idea what he was doing. It didn't work, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then today, like, really, really good, like, I'm totally, like, like, because I've had, like, a crush on this guy for a while, I'm like, you know, we're just, we're, we're not going to be committed or anything, but we're, we just decided we're just going to have friends, we're yeah. going to be friends, you know, yeah. with a little messing around and stuff. Yeah. Friends so, with benefits. Yeah. Right. Not Special all girls friends. want commitment, just to let you guys know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Christy wants lithium, but she doesn't want sane, uh, sane ones do. So we'll get into what's wrong with you in a, in a little bit. But was it the second guy was the guy you liked or the third, third guy? guy? Today. Today. All right. So how did he do? Awesome. Like, I was so impressed, right? Really? Yes. Very, That's very nice. impressed. <laughs> and then, um, like, I was like, because you know when, like, I'm going to the climax and, like, there's pressure and, like, like, I don't know if I peed. I don't know what happened, but, like, I got so nervous. Like, I just, like, sort of stopped. You stopped. Yeah, like, I don't want to do it anymore because I wasn't sure. Like, I felt like if I was going to pee or something, I don't want to pee on him. Oh, so you, right. Oh, so you felt like you were going to urinate. Yeah, like, do girls urinate? Then, like, yes, there is such a thing. Yeah, and yeah, more than urinating, there's a fear or feeling of urination. But some women do have orgasmic incontinence. And some actually release a bunch of other fluids. That's, uh, hey, it would be fair to guys. For ages, we suffered with the fear of blowing wind during sex yeah. and yet for ages but you can't pee right a of man. we were actually talking about pee. this on the way down is i i'm under the impression that there's a biological like safeguard when uh-huh. you have like a full erection I, i'm sorry I'm yes. I'm, I'm not, so you, can't you can't pee, pee right it's well, impossible I, I i was always trained that you couldn't i certainly can't overcome that myself mm-hmm. uh, however <laughs> we have callers that claim they can do that you can do it adam I do it in the like morning. Full, like full on. No, Not no, in the no. morning. No, it comes down a little bit in the morning. Yeah, By yeah. the time you get to the yeah, toilet. We're right? talking about in, a, in <laughs> well, action. When, to when actually in, get to the sink, but when, whatever same you want. Room, you know, same, when you, same corner of the room, yeah. couch. <laughs> I can't whiz in the toilet with a boner, but I can go in the sink. When no you problem. put it to service, though, it ain't nothing, no pee coming. Right. Out. No, no. Yeah. Right. No. Hey, Christy? Yeah. Uh, what's your nationality? I'm Asian. Drew heard that. Huh? Very, very interesting. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a what's it called exception and, to all Asians. And, and no, no. And then now you can start asking your questions. Okay. You see what I'm saying, Adam? Yes. Okay. Um, so is that like I don't want to pee on him? Like. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hold on. Hold on a okay. second. Now, did you perform oral sex on him? No, I never have, and like I don't plan to because I think dick is so disgustingly ugly. You think you think the penis is ugly? Yes, I think it's hideous. Like I'm Hold really on. scared of it. Mm. Hold on, we got an Asian mm. Jew here. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen this mixture before. <laughs> this is incredible. Wait, your mother's Asian, your father's Jewish? No, I'm also Asian. Wow, interesting. Hmm. And uh, you you'll not give this guy a, a you'll not reciprocate with the oral, even though you're very much enamored with him. Mm-hmm. Like I told him, I'm not going to do it. Like that's fine. All right. Uh, now. We're gonna get. We're gonna put a finer point on the Asian. We're saying Korean. Yeah. <laughs> Drew knows. How'd you, how'd you know? He can smell you. He knows a Korean. <laughs> he know. Yes, I like to think you are a uh, no, because, South Korean. Because I, I I know the rebound against the intensely controlling parent. Yeah, and that's what this is. The Korean Korean families are pretty pretty uptight with no, the kids. My, I'm like the exception to everything. Like I have the most weirdest family. What do they do? Well, I don't live with my parents. Like, yeah. 
ever since high school started, I haven't lived with my parents. I've been living with my sister. Were they strict, your parents? No, not at all. My mom's like one of the most, like she trusts me more than anything. Like, right. I don't know Now, now I'm totally confused. <laughs> I, was, I was completely yeah, on board all I the way I tell you, like, I'm the exception to every Korean family. Wait, why don't you live with them? Um, because my mom lives in Korea because that's where her work is. Oh, boy. She has a business over there, so, and I don't live with my dad because they're divorced. And I have a really crazy, effed up childhood. Mm-hmm. And that we might get that. Re- well, relate to me being scared of the whole mm-hmm. male organ yeah. and stuff. Yeah. What was up? Oh, were you molested? Yeah. And lo- I rarely remember it, though. Yeah, yeah. It was enough to freak you out. So. Yeah, it was like in second grade by my friend's grandpa. Oh, my oh, God. Man. Yeah. yeah. Wow, and a, a round eye, non-Korean, as we call him. He was round eye. He was Asian. I don't remember what. Aha! Uh-huh. Oh my goodness! Old Asian guys doing yeah, that. No, they're sort of sick. <laughs> no, no, I, I would think <laughs> if they'd be last on my list of <laughs> like the pedophiles. No, you'd be surprised. Oh, well, Christy pulls them out, I guess. Really? Yeah. All right, right so Christy, the, there's more going on here than just hey, I don't want commitment, right? I'm sorry. There's more going on with you than just hey, I don't want commitment. Yeah, well, it's I mean, you, you need like, arousal. You need. You probably go to raves and you need all kinds no, of stuff. All right, let's. Chris on a roll now. with this Korean is raves. <laughs> well, but I mean, she gets leads out a lot of arousal. Uh, okay, she's like, manage those it, it, here's the thing: she doesn't want to have sex. She got traumatized. You got to get some help for that trauma, uh, and I mean, that's man, about it. family. I mean, God it, sakes. Otherwise, it's just sort of acting out. And mm. You go through your life. You're scared of the penis. Sounds, she sounds bipolar. I don't know. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about Asians. Either you, you can't pry a word out of them with a flat bar, or you can't get them to shut up. There's no in-between with the Asians. They, they, they're, they're auctioneers, or you can't, you can't choke them. You can give them a Heimlich to get a vowel out of them. I don't know what that is. It's either game on or game off with the Asians. Game on with Christy. I've explained this many times. It's either super, super reverent Asians that do all the, the, the bowing and everything, or it's the crazy guy with the squatted Acura and the uh, funky hair. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. There's That's no, the world I want to get into. There's no myself. in between Asians. There's <laughs> no. There's no. There's no. There's no middle ground with the Asians. <laughs> you said the same thing about the Israelis. <laughs> Israelis, super pussy or commando. <laughs> Green beret. Green beret. Killy with piano wire. Israeli. No middle ground. Jews either. Soup. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> You, you got the guy who's like balding. He's a he's a he's a he's an orthodontist, and his wife's brow beats him all day long. That's that's that Jew. That's the North American domestic <laughs> Jew we have out here. True, we in your lineage, you know, you know. And then there's a the crazy Israeli commando Jew, super hairy forearm guy. You know, said kill. His name was like Avo. And he wants to, to explain how to kill guys Huge with his thumbs. Like, and sounds he, like Yul Brenner when he talks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, and he explains that he did time in the Israeli army, and they trained to kill him with the hands. There's that guy. But there's not the in-between Jew, and there's not the in-between Asian. See, us white guys, we got the in-between guys. Oh. That's where we're flexible. I'm pretty extreme myself. Yeah, you, you're pretty extreme, <laughs> but there are other other uh, Anglo versions who are, who are just in-between. That's true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not, not too edgy, just a little in-between. All right. All right. All right, so everyone clear on that? Take a break. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, we got to say goodbye to AFI, too, because uh-huh. uh, they got to go uh, do the big signing down at Tower Records. Thank guys, you guys. Yeah, it was a delight, <laughs> and uh, come back for an unabbreviated uh, version of this anytime you want. Yeah. Thank All you right. very much. We'll be right back. Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. It is interesting how we can read voices, though, isn't it? You and I? Mm-hmm. Drew, new people, agent. But people don't know what I was doing. Don't know why that... You didn't mention what I had done. Mm. Drew beat off during the break. And that, that was very impressive. Mm-hmm. The band was moved. All right. I didn't think he went... He told me not to say it on the air. I was a little surprised, but uh, whatever. He did it. It's cool. I caught him. No big deal. World... Moves on, Drew. Let's just keep going with the show. All right. No. Huh? Yeah. Oh, is there something else you want to discuss? Oh, Drew, uh, after our last call, wrote down Asian. During the call. During the call. Wrote down Asian and then wrote down Korean. But slid the paper over to me. (laughs) I don't know. Drew, you're allowed to... You're not racist if you mention races, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's it's a little bit of the magician act. You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand. It's quality to it. Mm. Well, AFI has uh, left the building. Record signing over at uh, Tower on Sunset. Nice guys. Glad to meet them. Um, I'm ironically finishing off chocolate and uh, heading in to have a second tooth pulled uh, tomorrow afternoon. What? 
Mm-hmm. I thought all this work was to save teeth. Is it, are they going to get another implant there, too? Yes, it will. Uh, yes. A pole and then an implant. Is, do you have an implant in place now? No, I don't. Mm. I just have uh, a metal post that is uh, yeah, in there. That is a euphemism for... What? Something. That, let's see it. Yeah, uh-huh. it, it looks like some sort of... Uh, it's it's big. Yeah. It's, it's a post. You'd think it'll maybe a little screw sticking up. No, it's six millimeters, yeah. which uh, is uh, coming on to a uh, quarter inch. Mm. And that's the same size hole they need to drill into my jaw in order to thread that post into. And the, other, the next door tooth, huh? Yeah, that is good times. Mm-hmm. I'm going to a new dentist this time, though. What? Yeah. How many dentists have you been through now? Four or five. Oh, my God. Well, Where, where'd you find this one? Well, this guy, this guy did my teeth whitening, and he's a good guy. He's expensive as hell. He's over there in like Beverly Hills, and he, <laughs> the guy's, this guy's got a horrible combination. His, his, he's a dentist whose who's, who's number one hobby is photography. Yeah. And his entire office is filled with before and after pictures. But I don't know if you've studied a lot of before dentist pictures. That's pretty gruesome. Uh, gruesome, gruesome in a book. Yeah. But when they're uh, 24 by 32 and they're in full color and they're all over the goddamn office and you're just staring, it's like, I, I tell all the dentists with the charts, the before and afters, the pictures, the schematics, the diagrams, like, listen, we don't like teeth. <laughs> Do you understand? I don't want to be here. What's with all the pictures? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, look. <laughs> I'm going to see pictures of goddamn trees and uh, Bengal tigers and Smurfs. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see a bunch of people left up teeth. I, I, I don't share your love of teeth. That's, that's what I'm going to. That's what I'm going to say to you. And really, and teeth, mouths never look worse than in a photograph. Even now, with the spreaders and stuff. You can't even tell. <laughs> you can't tell it's a mouth. You don't really. see the person's nose right, or anything. Right. You just see the whole goddamn mouth. Yeah. And the befores are like, you, you have to avert your gaze. It's yeah. like, uh, speaking of gaze, it's like looking at gay porn. I mean, the, oh, yeah. the before. I mean, there's guys who come came here from different countries and stuff. Where there's, you know, no fluoride in the water. Mm-hmm. Yellow and stuff's crooked. And there's yeah. weird saliva. And yeah. this, the guy just ate a churro or <laughs> something. It's a mess. And I'm just standing there thinking about my own pain in my own teeth and I'm staring at nothing but mouths. It's like, I want to get, get something else going in there. I love the guys that are in love with their profession. It always makes me a little nervous. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, this guy's good. And this guy, you know, he did that thing where... It, it, dentists are like everybody else. They're, they're like uh, every carpenter I knew would come into a house that they were supposed to work on and they'd look around. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Yeah. What happened here? Uh, well, the last guy, yeah, yeah. Yes, he went with a butt joint. Not uh, not a big fan of the rabbit or the dado. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, see what he did here. Yeah, he uh, yeah he uh, should have went with a cope. Instead, he went with a ninety on that. Oh, I wouldn't boy. have done it that way. You know, this is what everyone does. Yeah, everyone yeah. beats up everyone else's work. So this guy's looking into my mouth, and of course, it's the work of everyone but him. And he's like, yeah, uh, what happened here? It's like, <laughs> all right, come on. Like, oh yeah, not good, not good. So he's doing this whole thing. And he's like, you need to come in here, and we need to take care of this tooth. We need to take these out. We need to rework this. And I'm like, listen, oh. answer me this. You got, you got that thing that sprays water in people's <laughs> mouth, right? He goes, Is yep. It <laughs> yeah. I go, you got a heater on it? And he goes, no. No, oh. I don't. I go, you don't have a heater on it. And he goes, no. And he goes, Does there, is there even such a device to heat this water? And I said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, there is. I've done a little research from, you know, my constant complaining makes me an expert in almost everything. And he's like, uh, well, I'll tell you what. If I get those heaters installed, will you come over here? And I said, all right, you got a deal. So uh, he had the heaters installed with that uh, water. Oh, my God. Well, I... Why do I need uh, cold mountain water sprayed on my sensitive teeth? I think you and him were were separated at birth or something. He's a businessman. (laughs) I'm just saying. How badly does he need to redo your one tooth? Uh, he's got images all over his office of all this he's stuff. He's got he like five grand worth of work to do in my mouth. Right. Stupid heater probably cost him 180 bucks. But what I like is he he think he looks at you and says that's a good idea. I should do it anyway. Yes. Yeah. When your mouth is back and everything's but all that, shot that shows, up and sore, and they're just spraying that cold water all over your that teeth. That shows it an hurts. interesting ability to get through inertia. You know what I mean? When you're doing your thing every day, just doing it the way you do it, that's pretty remarkable to be able to. Yeah. Make a change, boom, like that. Make well, I, I listen. I, I don't I don't blame people for not necessarily implementing or knowing things. Oh yeah, actually I do every day. But but I really blame them for going. 
Is that a fact? Yeah. And let's move on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, my last dentist is like, oh, yeah, yeah, they got those. They got those. Been out for a while now. That's a like, great idea. And I'm like, and where are they? He's like, yeah, I don't get them. Mm. And so he never got them, so there's it. Screw it. Yes, everyone should do this. Go to the people that do what you want. Yeah. I'm going to have nice hot water sprayed on my teeth tomorrow when I'm uh, it's writhing in pain. To give you nitrous? He's giving me nitrous and like a shot in the ass or something. Oh, oh Jesus gonna, Christ. I told him, look, here's, oh, what, oh, here's what I want. I want a tape recorder going. I, we got, you've got to get a microphone in there. I told, him, I told him I wanted to be darted. I told him that when I get out of my car in the parking lot, I want one of your employees to actually hit me with a blowgun in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> and then tag me like a rhino, just drag me into the office and work on me. I didn't want to know. And then I'm just going to wake up slumped over my steering wheel, back of my car with my mouth fixed. Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be a couple hours later. Maybe it'll be a couple days later. And, I don't care. And there'll be a scar in the, your back where they took your kidney, man? Oh, yeah, he's going to give me a shot or a pill or something. Yeah. This, is why, this is why I'm not going to my other dentist, too, because I'm like, he's like, oh, you got that post in your mouth. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, that's tough, you know, because they, they cut through the gum and they drill a hole in your bone. Yeah. And I said, uh, yeah, and he goes, did you give you did you give you a sedative or a right. shot or anything? I'm like, no, no, he didn't. He's like, oh, wow. <laughs> well, so, no, who's gonna actually make the tooth for the one that's it, that's supposed now? Don't let him fight over it. Here, here's here's my point. I was like, yeah, why didn't the guy give me a pill or a sedative or something? He's like, oh, I don't know. That's tough. And I was like, this son of a bitch. So interesting how you evaluate Damn. their work. Hot water, sedation. Ah. Nope, nothing else matters. It's just interesting. Well, my mouth's open for a goddamn hour while these guys wreak havoc in it. I, I want to be sedated. Yeah, right. Is there something wrong with that? No, I'm not passing judgment on it. No, no. I got the a-holes that are trying to talk me out of nitrous every time. Right. Hey, how about the nitrous, Doc? Well, you don't need it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, we had a nine-year-old girl in here the other day. She didn't. Yeah. I want it. Yeah, you flap your lips like that for five minutes. And they're like, oh, Mr. Kroll, come right over here, please. Turn the gas on, honey. Arguing with me over the goddamn nitrous. Bring it on, Hillary. Fourteen. How dare you? Um, hi. I was uh, wondering if I should get. By the way, I love you guys. I listen to you all every night. Thanks, baby doll. Um, I was wondering if I should get therapy for um, when I was in seventh grade. I think that was yeah, when I was like twelve. Um, I was molested. What happened? Um, I was vacationing in Mexico, and I enough was, said. <laughs> enough said. <laughs> Yeah. And I was walking back to the hotel, and this guy just ran up behind me and touched me. Yeah, it's, mm. uh, unless something had happened to you when you were younger that sort of re-triggered some old post-traumatic stress feelings, it's hard to make much of that. I mean, Did she, she say 12? Yeah. So it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And were what you, do you mean ran up behind you and just touched you? Well, I was, I was walking back to the hotel, and he was just standing there, and so I yeah. walked past him, and he just ran up behind <laughs> me and grabbed me and started touching me. Just like copying a feel as fast as he could. Yeah. And then he let you go. Yeah. And how, what, how long what, did that go on for? Like, um, I think it was it was like less than a minute, but I was like yeah. kicking and screaming and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little traumatizing. It's traumatizing. But it, it doesn't. Um, I, would, I wouldn't say you were sexually molested. Right. I, I, it, it's traumatic and it's it's unpleasant. But if it's to the point where you're still like having sleep problems and mood disturbances, that, that suggests that you've been traumatized when you were younger, and this sort of re-triggered some of those feelings. Okay. Anything happen? You were a little little child. Um, no. All right. Mm. Are, you, are you depressed or anything else going on? Um, not really. Is this thing bothering you all the time? Not really. All right. Well, well, no. Wait a minute. What do you mean? I mean, you you must have thought it was something important for you. Well, it's just sometimes it just scares me so much that I can't even move. It just like freaks me out. All right. See that freezing thing suggested something else happened that sort of <coughs> indoctrinated that kind of biology into your system. You know what I'm saying? I don't think anything else happened. It's just, it's just I don't like. I'm not comfortable around guys. They just bother me. Mm -hmm. We like that about you. How's your dad they doing? Should right now. My dad's great. I love my dad. Okay. All right. Look, look, if you, if you want treatment, sure, by all means, I look into it. But it doesn't sound, nothing jumps out. Well, I mean, I think you could be uh, <laughs> treated for almost like. Post traumatic stress. I yeah, mean, that's somebody what she's describing. assaulted you. I, yeah. I wouldn't, and and there is an emphasis on the sexual assault. Yeah. though, though it wouldn't be traditional. No, no, there, there's for that. Yes, there's no doubt that these are post traumatic stress type symptoms. But the fact that something is sort of, you know, really, when a, a classic post traumatic stress disorder, you have to feel that your life is in danger. That's sort of a classic 
description of it. And a guy comes up and gooses you. It's like, yeah, it's unpleasant. It makes you feel out of control and powerless. But you don't really feel like your capacity, your possibility of going on being is being threatened. Yeah. Unless you were traumatized in some funny way when you were very, very young. And this sort of just brought that all back. All right. Well, also, people mature at different times. There's 14-year-olds that are call this show every night that uh, think they're 25. Yeah. And there are 14-year-olds who are a little slower in their progression sexually. Yeah. And when it comes to the opposite sex, that's fine. It's good. Yeah, just hang back. Loves her dad. They go to Mexico. Mm, from but Seattle. Beth? Yes? You're 21? Yeah. He must be an airline, airline pilot. Hmm? Hang on a second. I want to. I want to know that. What her dad? Yeah. Oh, look, who are you, Kreskin? All of a sudden? Yeah, I just. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ! Hillary. Hillary, there. All oh, right, she got. It. All right, the world may never know. Mm. All right. I'm trying, to, to trying to think the farthest I ever got with my parents. I think I went to. Uh, I think I made out to Northridge with my dad. Wow, once. impressive. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's all the way on the other side of the valley. Beth. Yes. You're 21. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um. I have a question. Um, about a year and four months ago, my fiance died. Hmm. And since then, what happened? He got he got in a car accident. Mm. Wow. Um, I'm in the re Marine Reserves, and I was away in training. And uh, uh, what, what were the circumstances of this car accident? Um, it was just bad weather. Just bad weather. Yeah, just... bad weather, and he hit some water on the highway that we lived on, mm. and uh, hydroplaned, and it kicked the car sideways, and before the car ended up dying, and before he had a chance to get out of the other lane. He was T-boned, oh. and he died instantly. Him and a really good friend of ours were both in the car. Oh. And, um, Someone else was in the car? Yes, another friend of mine. How did they do? Um, he died instantly, too. Mm. Really? Yeah. Wow, it just it's almost going full speed when they hit him, huh? Uh, well, the, speedway, the speed on the road they were on is 50, 50 miles an hour. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah. It's been going 75, though. Yeah. All right. Wow. All right. Yeah. Sad. Um, but my question is, since then, I, I have had um, other relationships, and one in particular, I was I was with him for a good while. Um, we got together about four months after my fiancé died. Sure. And um, it's like, with him, I cannot complete the orgasm. I get all the way up to it, mm -hmm. and right as it's about to happen, just nothing. What do you feel? Like... Frustration because it really sucks that I can't get off. Are you on medication? No. You're like angry about it. Mm -hmm. Not no. I'm just like you know. Well, a after a while, it's gotten to me. But it's like when I'm when I like had just you know flings with somebody. Mm -hmm. I have no, it. Just I'm able to get off. But with mm -hmm. him, the closeness. Oh, mm -hmm. I could not. Well, you and you right. Your fiance was tragically taken away. You feel this bond with this new guy. It's, now yeah, it's you don't want to give it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's understandable, right? That's how women work. Like some kind of crazy cuckoo clock. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but, but it makes sense. Okay. All right, so what it is is like you can't give him your orgasm because you can't be that intimate with him because of, because of what you've had taken away from you so recently. Yeah. Okay. It just it kind makes of stay, sense, stay right? with it. Hang in there. I, I'm sure this will happen. Is he, how does he respond to you? Um, uh, not too well, considering we just recently broke up. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, you know. we, we had some issues, and that was kind of one of the leading into's. He took it as it was his fault. Well, what else? Were, what other issues his were fault? Yeah, I wonder if this was just um, a guy you shouldn't be having an orgasm with. He will... He was a guy that was really good for me because he was the friend that was there for me mm. through my fiance's death. Oh, yeah, but listen, that yeah. just means he was waiting around for you. So pick up the yeah. pieces. Yeah. First piece he picks up is the vagina. Right. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it, it, it was different, though. No. He, was, he did express to me he was interested in I, me. Of course. I pick up the vagina first, but, then I pick up the left boob, then I pick up the anus, and then I go for the right boob. Yeah. Just and, oh, oh, the mouth. Yeah. Jeez, I got to work on the pieces. Yeah. Um, when, I'm, when I'm there to pick up, yeah, the guy that's there to cry on your shoulder for your shoulder to provides your shoulder to cry on. That is a guy just waiting for you to be vulnerable. Yeah. I understand this woman. You don't understand that. That for you, a vulnerable guy is like yuck. I I I do understand. I have six older brothers. Right. Yeah, yeah. A lot of guys try to bend you right over that casket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, see, that's that's your move. He waited. He it's he did not move. pursue anything at all. I on a closed casket. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, I patient. Okay. Patient is. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you, you okay, but you broke up with this guy, and seems like you're gonna stay broken up with him. Oh yes, definitely. All right, well then it's uh, water under the bridge, as yeah, they but, say. But the thing with me was like I just I don't, I didn't know. It's, I mean, all right. Well, you didn't you get go. You, you've been you've been through some trauma. And you felt the intimacy with this guy, and you didn't want to give it up. Yeah, that's and, uh, what and, we think. Yeah, I think the guy may have been kind of dangerous to be with anyway. So, <clears throat> whatever it was, your instincts were probably good. You're 21. You've had a crazy year. Mm-hmm. Let's take a breather. Mm. Maybe, maybe don't be in a relationship for six months. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk to Tiffany, 17. Tiffany. Yeah. What's up, girl? Um. Well. Okay, I was dating <laughs> what? this boy about that for six oh, months, okay. and that was six months ago that we were dating, Yeah. and we never kissed or anything. How long were you dating for? For six months. I thought you said six months ago they were dating. And we were dating for six months. For six months, all right. All right. All right. And it was sort of frustrating because he wouldn't kiss me, uh-huh. and I didn't know why, and so like finally I just ended up breaking up with him. You didn't ask him why? Like, I asked him, and he's all, well, it's just my own problem. Well, he never tried to kiss you, or after you had established it, he wasn't much for kissing? No, like, no matter, no, any way, like... He never kissed? Never. Ever. And I was all, oh my gosh. So you're dating for six months, and he never kissed you? Never. And what, did he do anything else? All we did was hold hands and hug. That's it. All right. It was pretty boring. And... Anal. <laughs> just uh, hugging, holding hands, cornholing, and that was all. That's pretty much it. Okay. Oh. And then, like, but lately I've started to like him again. Sure. What's, what's and not to like? I've decided that I'm going to kiss him. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, but I don't know how to do it. Like, if I should tell him that I'm going to or if I should just. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, you no. got to grab him and kiss him. Well, him. now, but he said he had reasons why he didn't kiss. Like, Maybe one of the reasons is he can't initiate. Because, like, he can't um, do it. I guess he was, I guess, really nervous about it, and he didn't. He thought I was going to be all like, "No, don't kiss me" or something. And I was thinking in my head, like, "Why would I think that?" Yeah. yeah. Well, what's girl? If a girl's going out, okay, thank you. Let's talk to guys for a second. If a girl has agreed to go out with you and be with you, now there's there's two scenarios where they don't want you to kiss them. One is is it's like a blind date or first date, and it's not going too good. And the girl's thinking, please, no kiss at the end of the date. Because there will not be a second date. Right. But I can't make myself disappear. We're halfway into the right. meal. I don't right. even want to be here. The other one is, is I hope this guy doesn't think this is a date. I told him uh, he could swing by because he said he rides his mountain bike right, by right, my house. And right. I told him I didn't care if he stopped by and took a look at the architecture or something. But this is not a date. I hope right, he doesn't right. think it's a date. But if you eliminate those two things, meaning you guys are dating... And you've been on multiple dates. A woman wants you to kiss her, yeah, and wants wants you to do it in uh, in uh, fast order. Yeah. And so guys got to do this, and and you can't think about it. You can't intellectualize it too much. Am I right, Drew? Yeah, it's got to be more of an animal process. I'm just wondering what's the matter with that guy. Mm. If he just really lacks the capacity to initiate, maybe he's super spazzy. Yeah, you know, guys are. Yeah, yeah. they get uptight. It's a mess, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So, guys, just go. Just uh, make a move. And then don't discuss it. And don't worry. Your mouth will know what to do. It's like taking a crap. It really is. It's real. It's like, you know, cramping in someone's mouth. It's just, it's easy. It's no it's no big deal at all. Oh, Anderson wants to take a break. Well, hold on a second. Jonathan first. Jonathan? Yeah. You want to know if it's uh, ethical to go to strip clubs? Girls usually were abused. Right. This right. is this is interesting. First, first of all, let me tell you, Adam and Dr. Drew, I love you guys. I would try and listen to you every night. Thanks, yeah. I've actually been listening for a long time. I don't know, to the tune of about 15 <laughs> years or something. Wow, <laughs> good <laughs> use to the uh, good use <laughs> of the word, uh, the phrase. Of, well, I listen to, to you, Adam. You know, yeah. I, I try and uh, weave it into my daily conversation. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, no. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this was back when it was just on Sunday night with... Uh, Whoa. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, that I'm, is the tune I'm, of 15 years. Yeah, I'm a long-time fan. Hey, I used to listen to the show when it was just on Sunday night, too. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, Adam, you had made some comments about uh, Asians and Jews and Israelis. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually Asian and Jewish. 
Ooh. And I lived in Israel for a couple of years. Oh, holy man. So you, I wanted to say you're right on the mark. <laughs> yeah. I laugh out loud when I hear you make them. Thank you. Thank uh, you. See, uh, other people criticize me for my racial insensitivity. but uh, No, it's not. I think there's a difference. One can be, not too. One yeah. can be mean and hateful. Not Jaime Ho over here. <laughs> he knows. All right, well, hold on a second, Jonathan. Yes, as, as you know, I love all races. Yeah, no, but I, I think that there's a difference. One can be mean and spiteful and hateful in yeah. racist comments. Yeah, yeah. And then there are just comments about people that fall into certain groups. Yeah, That's I don't, uh, I mean, I really, and we got to go to break. We're going to talk to you when we come back. But, right. you know, to me, there's sort of uh, differences. Uh, They're there's, interesting. Uh, well, there's many dogs, and there's many different breeds of dogs, and they all chihuahuas are a little bit uh, different than Labradors. I don't know why pointing that out makes you a dog hater. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Thank you. Because every Although those chihuahuas, yeah, I mean. Because the, the, the huge mistake that everyone makes is, well, it's because every human is unique and different. Now, BS, there's there's really just a few few different categories and, and difference in cultures and races. Of every, every human is a unique person, but we all follow a set of rules and principles. And right, that. right. Except for publicists. Yeah, those are horrible, horrible people. Here we go. All right. Hi, this is Alec Baldwin, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. <clears throat> hey. Who was that, Alec Baldwin? Put my headphones on. Oh, that was. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll get him back. He's really addicted to this show. Hmm. He calls me on my cell phone and tells me, uh, tells me he tapes, uh, tapes the show. Huh. Well, actually, he tells me his driver tapes the show, and then they sit in the car and listen to it. Oh, funny. So, uh, hold on. Do you own a ranch in Ojai? Now, That's like, if, if, if you're sitting in your car right now honk your horn. with your driver, <laughs> and you're listening to a tape of the show, I want you to honk the horn. <laughs> That's good, Drew. <laughs> All right. And if, you, and if anyone else hears a horn honking... That's it could, Alec Baldwin. Now, it's a tape of the show, so it could be any time. Yeah, whenever you hear a horn, that could be Alec Baldwin. Could be Saturday at noon. Well, he'd be dr being driven. That's right. right? So it'd be, you wouldn't see him in the driver's seat. That's right. My buddy's working on a film with him right now. He's got some great stories. I'll tell you guys at the break. All yeah. right. That's going to be good. So let's... Uh, back to Jonathan. Yeah, back to Jonathan. And when we uh, left off, we're speaking to uh, Jonathan about the uh, ethicalness is... Of the ethicality, would that be it, Drew? Mm -hmm. Of uh, going to strip clubs knowing that the women that you're looking at were probably victims of uh, some form of abuse at some point. Right? Yeah, that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. How do, how do you overcome it, Jonathan? Well, I, I usually don't go to strip clubs. I've only gone a couple times for uh, bachelor parties, that type of thing. And But I come away feeling kind of dirty. From well, the the the, the, uh, the world we well, could be gay, but the world is is filled with this kind of stuff. Like, for instance, a lot of countries we disagree with, whose politics we disagree with. For instance, China, but I, half the stuff you buy when you go to the markets from China, hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, you you so you you are a customer of You're, exploitive. It, well, systems. China's using, let's say, exploited labor to yeah. build the products that they ship to the U.S. that we readily buy. Here's the more complicated thing I think about the strip bar thing, and it's it's really hard to reconcile. That is that the women who do this do it will, willingly. They don't want to be rescued by anybody. Yeah, you're taking away their livelihood by not going. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you are reinforcing their traumas and participating in their acting out. Right. But it's up to them to want to change that. Yeah. And listen, they, they just have some crampy receptionist job and their boss would be effing them. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, it's a bit of a specious argument. Dr. It, it absolutely is. I, I totally agree with you. But it, it's an interesting sort of argument path to go down because ultimately you end up saying, well, maybe these options shouldn't be out there for them. And that's really the only way you can kind of contain these impulses. But well, that's not going to happen. Well, I'm, I'm not advocating that we should pass laws closing them. I, I think you make a good point that they're consenting adults and no one's putting yeah. a gun to their head and well, forcing listen. them to do that. My, my question is yeah. more for the guys, yeah. uh, especially, you, you know, night after night, Adam, you make comments about uh, when the girls get diddled that they turn out to be strippers. Yeah, yeah they and do. And by going to the strip club, I think you are in a certain way facilitating 
You're participating with them in the trauma. You well, in a, in, a, in a certain degree, I mean, I agree with Drew on, a, on one hand, which is you're, you're, well, you're helping paying their bills, even if they're buying Coke and Tab. <laughs> I don't mean Coke, the soft drink. I mean, I mean eight balls and Tab with your money. What do you mean Tab? Yeah, I do mean Tab. Yeah, diet soda and, and uh, eight balls. But, uh, A, these people uh, are going to do something anyway, and this still doesn't make them not a victim. I mean, if their uncle molested them when they were five and they didn't go into stripping, they instead became secretaries, it still doesn't take away what happened in so, the past. So, so really the question is what I'm suggesting is it becomes how do you encourage people who've been traumatized to do things that make them better rather than... Well, well clearly what they need is what you guys are advocating is yeah. therapy. Yeah. And, but, yeah. but dancing on a stage isn't going to... No, isn't but gonna listen, Jonathan... Here's here's uh, here's how you make your peace. You decide where your line is. Oh, I've already decided for myself, Adam. But I I just was curious if you had any. Well, here, I find it very very sad. Here's my thing. I, and uh, the yeah, so sad he beats off in the cab on the no, way home. No, no, in Canada. <laughs> in, in fact, oh, yes. in fact, you know, maybe you don't know this. They they all been all these places for a bachelor party when, before we knew each other. And I ended up... Drew like, went to a strip club? Yeah, I ended up having, like, discussions. i hearing all about their cervical cancers and their this and their that. I mean, you know? It was hard yeah. not to, like... Yeah. I, I know you don't like to see them as human beings. Uh, mental note. Don't bring... No, <laughs> mental note. Kill Drew. There we go. Okay. Look, here's the thing. Here's, here's my line. I, I like to go to the topless places because the bottomless places, they get a little skanky. And uh, chicks were definitely abused over there. Mm. Topless means they don't like their dad but doesn't mean they're sexually abused or physically abused, all right? <laughs> number, that's number one. Number number two, yeah, if you're going to a bachelor party and they get a couple of chicks with the uh, double-ended dildo and they're going to do this whole thing with the with the, with the the whipped cream and everything, and sometimes that gets a little weird because it's like, all right, these people were clearly exploited. Oh, my God. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Drew, stop pretending like it doesn't exist. I, I've never witnessed blah, 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 that. Blah, I've never blah, witnessed blah, that. Blah, blah, blah. All right, shut up. All right, so uh, stick with the topless places. Get good and juiced. It helps your conscience. And uh, tip the ladies. They appreciate it. So where are we, Drew? Are you going to pick uh, Colin? Okay. Drew acting surprised about what goes on at a bachelor party. I've never seen that. No. Are you telling me there's two young ladies who engage in a sensual act in, in, in the suite of... <laughs> Kimberly? Yeah. You're feeling guilty, aren't you? You're 20? Yes. What's up? Um, well, I was just wondering, um, I went to a lot of crafts when I was younger, um, sexually, mm -hmm. and, um, my grandfather was, uh, textbook sex addicted. Mm -hmm. My father was too. Mm -hmm. Your and grandfather was? Yes. He <laughs> raped my aunt, my father raped and molested me. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I went through a long period where I didn't want anyone to touch me. Sure. So he raped your father's sister and that and his daughter. Yes. Well, he he and yeah, he raped his daughter and his son. No, his son raped her. Yeah. But, but I don't think me. Grandpa didn't my rape grandfather raped his daughter. Oh, but the grandpa didn't rape dad. No. Ah, okay. so what's the beef? So oh. <laughs> my beef is yeah. is I decided I was going to bust through all the crap and not let him control my life. Who? I made out with the first guy I saw. And now I can't help it. Like, I get the shakes at night, like if I go a week without anything. Oh, okay. And and where's your dad and your grandfather now? Um, My dad is in Seattle. Mm. That's and nice. my grandfather, who knows where. And oh. what if you, you don't know what state your grandfather said? No. And um, what are they doing or what what's your dad doing in Seattle? Um, he lives up there, and... Oh, okay. Lives up there. <laughs> Let me write know. this down. What's my dad doing in Israel? Uh-huh. Lives <laughs> up there. All right. So my, so my question was, is it genetic? Because I get... I just, I can't even breathe. All right. Sometimes. All right. Have, you, have you gotten any therapy? Um, I went, like, twice, oh, and... Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, well, this, this, you need to, you need, you need to go yeah. some... You need to go somewhere that's used to treating sexual addicted individuals, and it's you need a whole program. This is not sit down with an individual therapist kind of thing. This is a multiple discipline team that needs to descend upon you, and it needs to for quite some time if this is going to get better. 
And whether or not it's passed genetically, well, certainly the predisposition for addiction is passed genetically. Yeah. Uh, but the, the sexual addiction that you think you have is just caused by the trauma. That's the yeah, that's the environment. And people do get withdrawals. They get you know it it can behave just like a true pharmacologic addiction. And that's in Kimberly's textbook as well. All right. And uh, I just pray that uh, somebody just put a forty-four under uh, Grandpa's chin and just uh, put mm-hmm. his brains on the wall behind him. I, I really do. It's just uh, I, I can't stand the fact that these guys are sort of going about their lives yeah. uh, after this kind of stuff. Yeah. Especially Grandpa. Just, right. just listen. I, w- I want to give a quick plea. Quick plea. All you pedophiles out there and all you guys are going to do the molesting and the raping and all this kind of stuff. It's in your blood. It's haunting you. You you hear that little voice in your head telling you to do it. Now let me put a little voice in your head. Put a shotgun in your mouth and blow your head off. Would you please? It'll silence the voice. You'll go out with a little dignity and no one will get hurt. Unfortunately. Please do that. As as enticing a... Yeah. What a utopia. Solution as that is, it, it really is kind of irresponsible because these people do kill themselves. They do yes. destroy themselves to try to silence Good. these impulses. And, Good. The, and there are treatments out there. People would just take advantage of them. All right. Well, look, I'll give you a choice, Ed. You get some treatment or you blow your head off. And really, again, remember that the, the source of this is from the same tender injuries that Kimberly had. Sad, uh, very sad, but I also do believe that... Um, we have the ability to make decisions, and we're not reptiles, and well, we do not it have turns to out this, turn. It turns out there's something called effort, effortful control. It's yes. mediated by a particular part of your brain called the anterior cingulate gyrus. That's the part I want the shotgun to get. And if people don't have normal development, that part of the brain doesn't develop, and they can't contain these things. The well, brain isn't there to do it. Then... Then the shotgun then the therapy shotgun. comes in. You can't do it. It's not there. Drew, you're making a great argument for my shotgun therapy. Mm-hmm. One session doesn't last 50 minutes, and it's free. This is your population-based solutions. Yes, please. Yeah. Please. Everybody's thinking about doing something heinous to somebody else. Kill themselves. Test it on yourself. Thank you. Be a good rep, can you? Queens of the Stone Age, everybody. All righty. Paul Rodriguez is going to be in here tomorrow night. Hmm. He is the uh, Asian comedian. No, no, Hispanic. Hi. Uh, hey. That's right. Paul's going to be in here. We had him up before. Were you here when he was here before? Um, uh, I must have. Did uh, we have him before? I don't know if I was in here when he was here. Maybe I'm confusing him with somebody else. Yeah. All right. You're uh, you're thinking of when Freddie Prince was in here yeah. in 1977. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Ooh, there's a guy who killed himself. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. And they know Freddie Prince Jr., mm. but uh, they don't know that the senior killed himself when he was, man, he was like 22 or something. Mm. I mean, was he, he wasn't. Young? I someone he was can like get on the someone can get on the computer and tell me, but I mean, you think of. Uh, you know, your your Jim Morrisons and yeah. your Jimi Hendrix of the world is sort of uh, dying young at 28, 29 kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, he was more in the 22, 23 range. Really? Oof. Yeah. Had a big show. It was like yeah, Mr. Remember. Charisma. Yeah. He was very popular, good looking. It's crazy. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Siob- Siobhan. Yeah. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? I was hoping that you guys could help me out with something. I'm trying to figure out what could possibly be wrong with me. Why every relationship I'm in just kind of like goes to crap. Mm-hmm. Well, let's like, figure it out. <laughs> like every relationship I've ever been in, like basically they either beat the crap out of me or Ooh. they like to cheat on me. All right, then, so where did you first get involved with an abusive male? Very first. Oh, that was like when I was younger. How old? I don't know, maybe like five or something. I can't really like remember like five. Who, who was, was abusive that? when you were five? My first stepdad. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. there it is. Physical abuse? Huh? Yes. Where was your biological dad? Um, doing his own thing somewhere. All right. Who was it? Your stepdad a drug addict too? 
Um, I think he was, but I'm not sure. Like, he had this, like, little secret kind of life or whatever. Hmm. All right. Well, that's enough. Hmm. Your dad abandoned you, and your uh, stepfather was physically abusive. Yeah, and then whenever I meet someone and they're actually nice, kind of, like, perfect, there's just, I don't know. Like, the last relationship I was in, he said that he didn't know what he wanted. <laughs> like, everything was fine and perfect. And he didn't know what he wanted? Yeah, all of a sudden he just said he didn't know what he wanted. And I was like, what? Uh, all right, hold on. I'm putting her on hold because she has such a horrible phone line. Yeah. It does seem like, uh, seems like about 80% of the people that call the show have a horrible phone line. Yeah. Is that possible in this day and age? It sure seems like it. True. You have a phone at home. Yeah. Yes? It's good. You use it to call people yep. that aren't in your house? Yep. Is there ever, do you ever say to people, like, let me call you back. We got a bad line or no. I can't understand you? No. But what's going on? I mean, do poor people or dumb people or abused people that they have bad phone lines? Like, does the phone company give them horrible lines to Maybe insult we need to them further? Maybe attention to this. Maybe the kind of phone line we'll start noticing has some correlation with <laughs> people's conditions. True, and they're like prisoners in this room have to figure out ways to entertain ourselves. Uh -huh. all all right. Right. I was reminding you that when we were doing Dawson's Creek, you and I spent all hours talking about TV theme songs. We're just getting bored. I mean, for God's sakes. All right, so listen, uh, uh, Siobhan, uh, you got to be... So this is what's going on. So yeah. you need to... I, I don't think she's going to work out the relationship in the relationship at this point. No. What, what I mean is, is I think she should go Not without... A, right. Don't try to fix it in the relationship. Yeah, she needs to be out of a relationship for a while and sort of just not be with a guy. Yeah. What's, what's interesting is that most relationships, people in their teens and 20s, are perfect for a while and then they end. Mm -hmm. But the Siobhan, when they end, it's like, it's a catastrophe. Right. It can, I could never have another relationship again. It's, you know, and so it goes back to the abusive guys. Mm hmm So, you know, this is all the meaning and the trauma of being in a vulnerable relationship. Yeah. And it's one of these things where, uh, in life, you kind of understand it where... Uh, if you were a boxer and things weren't going good for you, you don't need more fights. You need right. to go to the gym. Right. You need to fix it in the gym. That's right. And then when you fix it, then you get back in the ring. That's right. And look at the ring as your relationship. Okay. And look at on. the gym as a therapist. Yep. And uh, you just need to fix this on your own. And it means you got to not have a fight for six months. Yep. Agreed. Fine. Uh, Freddie Prince uh, died at 23. Oh, my goodness. Younger than you remember, right? Yeah, well, because I was 12 or something. Yeah, he was like, yeah. I remember at the time, like, Freddie Prince, he shot himself. I was like, hey, he was old enough. I mean, he, he lived a long, he lived a rich life. <laughs> He'd been around. Yeah, I was like, what's the big deal? For yeah. Christ's sake, he had a mustache. <laughs> I mean, that was what I was thinking. No, I know where I was. I know, uh, I remember hearing the news. Mm. Uh, I was in the seventh grade, I believe. Hmm. So you were a little bit older than 12. Yeah. Well, you must have been 15, in high school. Yeah. Oh. 15, 16? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, how old are you? You're six years older than me or five years? How old are you, 38, 39? 38. Six years. Six years. Your birthday's in what month? <laughs> September. <laughs> All right, so, September. What the hell? Okay, here's the point. Six years older than me. Yeah. I was in the seventh grade. I was like 13. Yeah, I was 12. Seventh grade. Yeah, anyway, yeah. You were in college. Right. All right, all right. Okay. No, I could have been, yeah. Nah, yeah I, it seemed like I was younger. not a big fan. It seemed like not I was Not a big younger. fan of Chico. Is, it, is it? Is it? Here's my point. Freddie Prince Jr. No, not Freddie Prince. Freddie Prince, when he killed himself... Was young. Was young, and he was only like four years older than you. I know that sounds weird. Yeah, it sounds weird. All right, find out the year, Ann, and then we'll do the math. Alana? Five years at the most. What was the year? 77. So I was, yeah, uh, just in college. In college. Yeah. All right. See, I have to tell Drew what happened in his life. Uh, uh, Elena. 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 Oh, okay. Elena. Hold on a second. How do you spell Elena? E-L-E-N-A. Okay. Elena. E-L-E-N-A. Elena. All right. There we go. Yeah, don't give me that crap. Brian with their uh, Elena with a Y and an A and an L. What the hell is that? All right, Elena, what's up? Um, me and my boyfriend have been going out, uh, going on and off 
for the past like three years. The only reason is because the group we hang out doesn't like us going out, but they don't mind us being friends. And well, 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 uh, we've like, already lost me. What do you mean the group? It's got to do with Freddie Prince. <laughs> what do you mean the group doesn't like you going out? Who cares? I don't know what the problem is, but um, they do they do just about anything to separate us. Why? They don't mind us being friends. Why? What group? Um, a group we are best friends and stuff. What's the problem they're having? I have no idea. What do they tell you the problem is? They don't tell us anything. So how do you know they're trying to break you up? Because they're always, like, dissing us when we're together. What do you mean, dissing you? What do they tell what you? What do they tell you? They hate us together. All right, listen, I don't care. This is not some type of tiger beat hotline. Who cares? Well, I, I, I would be willing to address it, but you won't even tell us what, what they're... <laughs> Oh, look, who cares? I, I I I can't stand teenagers anymore, Drew. Look, if if people are giving you a hard time because you want to be with your boyfriend, then don't hang out with them. This is the only... Okay, here's what I'm saying, Drew. If somebody's giving... If, if somebody... If you have a situation with somebody and you can't avoid it, your boss at work is, is doing something to you, yeah. or a school teacher or something, parent, whatever... That's something we can talk about. Yeah. But if it's a situation where you don't need to be with this person, you don't need to be in this environment, yeah. and you're going to complain about it, I, then right. don't be in that environment. All right. Here's That's a Freddie it. Prince call here. All right. What? Four. Four? Laura? Yeah. You're 23. Yes. What's up? I was just wondering um, why Fred Prince had killed himself. Um, I'm, I'm, thinking, I don't, I'm not sure people it's Laura's age knew there was a Freddie Prince. I didn't. You didn't know there was a Freddie Prince Sr., huh? Nope. You just knew the junior, huh? Interesting. Correct. You you must have done the math at some point, but you figure the guy was still alive and enjoying his son's success, yeah, right? Yeah, the orthodontist in oh, Wisconsin yeah. somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, Freddie Prince was this uh, sort of charismatic uh, Latino comedian who got started when he was like 17, like mm. doing stand-up and stuff like that. It was on a successful show by the time it was like 19 or 20. Was, it, was that Chico and the Man then? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a Golden Girl. No, I thought maybe it was something in between oh. when he got going. In. No. 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 It's not enough? You're 19? You're on a... You're yeah, on a yeah. That, that's the one I remember. All right. Okay. Calm down over there, Drew. You're really agitated today. Okay, so he's <laughs> on this show, and he's real successful, and the show's going good, and he's making money, and he's working a, working a ton, and... Uh, doing all that bad Latino comedy where they make fun of themselves, but then they're really proud. And uh, has a gun around the house. And this is, uh, when you're depressed and mm. you uh, also don't mind uh, a little drink every once in a while and a pill every once in a while and you got a gun around, uh, this, is, this is really what happens. This is, this is really my problem with the, with the guns. Because right. a uh, couple of Ativans, a couple of Scotches, and uh, Brian Song comes on the TV at 2.30 in the morning. It's like, okay, get the gun out. Get the gun. Or I see the guy in the question mark suit, <laughs> trying to trying to give my money away. <laughs> I have fifteen thousand dollars to read a novel. All right, then the gun goes in the mouth. You see, so basically, it wasn't like the guy, or at least there was a lot of. I remember a lot of speculation. Speculation of whether he was screwing around, that he'd done stuff, he'd handled guns before, sort of irresponsibly, no, he had a, a few cocktails. Yeah, was, there was so, the substance involved and depression. I right, but there's there's sort of we can all agree that there's sort of suicide and suicide. Yeah, yeah, this was an impulsive act. He would have that. taken it back the next day yeah, sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah. and uh, that's the problem. It's permanent. We'll be back. Go back and join this song because it's not you two. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's Coldplay. We love Coldplay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Westwood One. Uh, I'll tell you, this place is on top of their game. Uh -huh. They got a whole new cork board in the back by the sink with <laughs> all the post things. <laughs> Big sign. I like that. I mean, the lawyers are forced us to put up a bunch of signs everywhere about equal employment and all yeah. stuff. They got a big sign for the minimum wage. The minimum wage is like four dollars and fifty six cents, and I'm like, geez, that seems a little light. I thought it was up around eight nine bucks, and it's like for nineteen ninety six. 
So I don't know if it's just wishful thinking. It's not a bad thing. Just put the minimum because the minimum wage is really bold print, and then the ninety six you got to really get up. You got to get them. <laughs> Only Westwood One would would put these mandatory post its up for for. It's, it's we're coming on what seven eight years yeah. old with the minimum wage. They got that up on the goddamn wall. Uh, the retard uh, retardism of this place never ceases to amaze me. All right, so I want to thank uh, AFI for coming in. Sweet kids, sweet kids. Nice guys, yeah. So until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Doctor Drew saying mahalo. Get a spoon and bang it inside my gay lover's mouth. Oh yeah, it'll just be your penis. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.